Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Behavioral Breakdown, the series where I uncover how the biggest brands in the world are using some clever psychology to influence your decisions. In this episode, we're looking at IKEA. Okay, so let's start with the meatballs because I know that's why you clicked on this video. A previous executive of IKEA once said that the meatballs are IKEA's biggest furniture seller, but why is this the case? Well, to understand, let's look at an old psychological model called the ELM, which stands for the horribly academic name of the Elaboration Likelihood Model. But what this horribly named model actually says is something very simple, which is that when we make big, important decisions, like buying furniture, we tend to spend more of our mental resources in making that decision. We'll spend more time making the decision, we'll weigh up more different alternatives, and overall, we'll be more receptive to rational arguments as to why we should buy that thing, like price. So, what impedes this kind of decision making? Well, it's hunger. Hungry people can't engage in this kind of slow, carefully considered decision making because all they can think about is how to get food. These kind of big decisions are ones that can be postponed till later, whereas the most important thing for people when they're hungry is, well, to be fed. IKEA understand this, and they understand that this has a big impact on whether or not they can close the deal on people buying their furniture. When a hungry customer is in Ikea, rather than spending the time to slowly amble through the different beds and compare the different alternatives, instead, they'll be rushing out of the store in order to try and feed themselves. And that's why Ikea sells the meatballs, and might I add, at extraordinarily low prices. So low, in fact, that often Ikea stores will sell their food at a loss. And the reason for that is because Ikea understands that even if they make a small loss on the food that they sell to you, they'll more than make up for it by selling you a thousand pound sofa. So that's why IKEA meatballs make you buy more furniture, but stick around for the rest of this video because I'm about to reveal some even more crazy tactics that IKEA are using in order to get you to buy more of their products. Like for example, the fact that IKEA make you walk through the entire shop before they even let you buy anything. Why would they do this? Usually when companies want people to buy things, they try and make purchasing as quick and easy as possible, but IKEA seems to do the opposite. So what's really going on here? Well, in psychology, there's a principle known as sunk cost bias that basically says that after we've invested a significant amount of our money, time, or effort into something, it means that we're much more likely to follow through with it to the end. By the time you walk through the IKEA shop, you've invested a huge amount of your time and basically have to take out the best part of an entire day just to make this one purchase, which means then that not following through with that purchase at the end can make you feel like, well, you've wasted your entire day. By making customers walk through their entire shop and spend an enormous amount of time in there, they're making it far less likely that people will walk out of their shop empty-handed. Okay, so that's two pretty big principles that IKEA use out of the way, but let's rattle off a few quick ones just so that you can see what's going on here. The first one is why does IKEA build these fake rooms and spend an enormous amount of money and resources to do so? Well, it's to reduce psychological distance and improve mental simulation. What I mean by this is that if people can understand how their product is going to be used in real life and they can more accurately imagine that in their mind, then they're more likely to follow through with actually purchasing it. The next one of these bundled prices that I saw dotted around the shop, these help reduce the cognitive load in making calculations about how much things will cost. By bundling things together, they reduce the amount of choice overload that a customer has to go through and therefore makes purchasing much easier because the amount of mental stress is lower. And also I thought that their pricing strategy was interesting too. Some of their prices end in round numbers like zeros and some of them end in less round numbers like nines and eights. They don't seem to have a very consistent pricing strategy which signals to me that they don't really have a nailed down strategy that they know works for them. And I suspect that the reason for that would be due to, well, the elaboration likelihood model that I talked about earlier. The fact that people are engaging more mental resources into making these big expensive purchases, which means that these little tricks like reducing a penny off the price I don't think will have as big a difference as compared to low cost items like sweets or chocolate bars in the supermarket. But finally, and what I think is a really interesting aspect of IKEA is probably this section right here. This is the kind of open your wallet section of IKEA where they have loads of these little products that you can always imagine being quite useful in your home. Now, why is it so easy for people to make a huge amount of unplanned purchases in this area? Well, it's due to a very basic behavioral science principle known as anchoring. What the anchoring principle says is that the first price that we hear becomes the anchor from which all other prices are tethered to. In other words, we compare all future prices to those initial ones. When you go into Ikea, the first items that you see are those big ticket items like sofas and beds, which are very high cost, which means that our price anchor is set very high from the get-go. As a result of that, when you go into the next section with the smaller household items, relative to those big ticket items, they seem really cheap, and therefore we feel like we're getting a great deal when we buy them. Them. As a result of that, people are much more likely just to shove a load of these things that they didn't really plan on buying into their huge trolley, which is another form of anchoring by the way, because, well, they just feel like a great deal. 
So those are just some behavioral science principles that I spotted when walking around Ikea. If you can think of any more or you think that I missed any, please put them in the comments below. And also put in the comments below, what other companies do you want to see on this series behavioral breakdown? All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to learn about the Ikea effect, which is a behavioral science principle named after the Ikea shop itself, then you should watch this video of mine, which is actually one of my most popular videos. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.